I had done this much of the painting down at the, uh, the creek right on site and uh, I thought well I'll wait till I get home and do the refined part of it this is a little more demanding because I need to use masking fluid for the uh, reflections in the sort of little tumbling water over the stones in the foreground that I've got to preserve the highlights while I paint the the creek on wet paper so the uh, I don't put any um, soap or anything on the brush before I put the masking fluid down and it's not on there long enough for me to really worry about it if I was going to be spending a you know 15 20 minutes or so working with it I probably use a little bit of dish detergent on the brush and then wipe it clean just to, so it would release the the dried masking fluid as it accumulates but I I rinse it out if it starts to cake up it's pretty annoying stuff really this but uh, I don't see any other way of solving this problem now I put out a little bit of uh, cobalt blue and a little bit of um, a yellow right out of the tube because I'm going to be jumping back and forth a lot between those two pigments and this helps to uh, keep the wells from getting too contaminated because I'm going to you know splotch a bunch of leaves on this I used a bit of raw sienna and cobalt blue for the the leaves and a bit of the sky showing through when I was painting on site there and that's that's just a, a little dab I think I've had some new gamboge kicking around it's not one of my regular palette colors but I always find it doesn't really matter what yellow you use it's just to get a variety of greens there's different ways of, of applying texture to busy places like this just splatter it a little bit I prefer to, to draw most of them because it's kind of pot luck just you know splashing around and this is another technique and just spray a little bit then when you uh, go in with a brush it'll sometimes hit a damp spot and bleed and other times it'll just leave a, a hard edge so you get a kind of a random mixture I just keep changing the mixture on the brush here switch to a, a rigger and just draw in a few trunks and branches I don't want to spend a lot of time on this part of it because I want to demonstrate mainly the uh, reflections in this water but we need to set the stage here with some background bushes and twigs and shrubbery Just use a bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Sometimes you can use a touch of uh, violet instead of the ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna. It gives you a, a reddish line. Hard to see on the computer, but it contrasts nicer with the greens. Now, this is the main purpose of this demonstration is this section here I'm going to wet the paper but it's just a big mop brush doesn't matter what brush you use to wet it with I'm going right over top of the rocks and logs that's sort of the area I want to work with that
and a flat brush for this just going back and getting some of that yellow has a little bit of the blue in it so it's a slightly greenish yellow now add a bit more blue to it just want a whole bunch of different uh, yellows and greens being reflected The water is moving so it kind of distorts the reflections around. You can get away with using your imagination on this step. I want to work quickly enough so that uh, the marks hold out their shape, but they leave a a soft edge at the same time. That white bit in the center is going to be a dark reflection from that stump. This is a little tricky working these smooth shapes the way this water kind of swirls around. It doesn't really fall, it just kind of rolls over the top of these stones. I've used a bit of um, raw sienna too. If you don't want the yellows too bright, you can switch down to something yellow ochre, kind of it's the same color as raw sienna. Going to a little slightly smaller flat brush than the one I was using. It's about a three quarter. It's getting quite dry now so the marks are holding up even better. Still giving me the soft edge I want but now uh, very dry, a little bit of blue to give that rushing part of the water. And while it's still damp enough, I can get just a few more darks. A little more pattern. There's so much pattern in my reference photo, I'll never be able to get that much. But I just want it to be sort of pleasing. It's all in, an interpretation. Now it's dry, totally dry, and I'm going to take the masking fluid off. You see it got quite a bit lighter when it dried too. I'm just using tape with a sticky side to lift that very gently. It's got to be totally dry or you will tear the paper. You can feel your hands are clean and dry. You can feel any little bits that you've missed. Now I'm going to have to scrub those edges. This is what I really don't like about masking fluid, but using a cut off oil painting brush and just wetting it, shaking off the excess water, I can just touch those edges and soften them. It looks so uh, harsh when you take that protection off them. It's kind of a tedious little job to go in and just blend those edges. I 
when I cut that oil painting brush off, I used a piece of sandpaper and just rub it on it because scissors or a knife never really cut all the little fibers the same length. So it helps to wear them down with a bit of sandpaper to get them nice and even. Now, pressing a, a round brush flat will let you kind of feather the edges. You're just using a little darker mixture of the same greens. A little ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna to get this dark for the rocks along the side of the stream. My light's coming pretty much from the top, but a little bit off to the left, so I'm thinking that the only shape I'm really going to need is on the right side of those. Got a little bit of uh, transparent yellow. You, you, you don't have to use any, well, just a, any transparent yellow. Indian yellow works. Um, New Gamboge works, even quinacridone gold. I, I'm just trying to beef up the yellow a little because it looked a bit faded. I think the light was coming through the, the green leaves and it seems to amplify the yellow. So I'm going to pick that up in the reflections as well. And now when I get the darks going, it should sort of squeeze the power out of those lighter, warmer colors. It should start looking a little brighter. Now back to my old faithful burnt sienna with ultramarine in it. Get these browns for the for the logs. You can see the paper is totally dry now, and these I don't mind a bit of a dry brush look to these. Some of this is kind of fiddly, but it's only going to be in a small area. So I need something in this composition to, to kind of get your attention. Kind of put a few, you can use the liner brush, put a few uh, twigs growing out of this stump too. That give it a bit of a lacier look.
you get used to just jumping back and forth with mixing colors on your palette as you go just so you can get a nice variety this is just a little more cobalt blue here to um, dress up that splashy area in the foreground now I just have to finish off these two logs on the left it's a never-ending battle to decide do you want the object to be lighter or darker than the background if I wanted the top of that log to be lighter I would have had to go in and make the water darker which I didn't really want to do I didn't want to mess up that wash that's already there so I'm just making this slightly darker than the background on the top and then quite a bit darker on the bottom of this log to give it roundness Now here's what I'm doing with those round brushes when I get dry brush effect. Just make sure the mixture on the palette is really dry and it's just almost blends like a pastel. You press it down and, and you can feel when the, when the brush is uh, going to stay spread but yet still has enough paint on it. It's worth practicing that. And that's the final result.